Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. We're in Foundry VTT and we're looking at another add-on today. Um, and it is one that we've kind of skirted around the edges of before, but not really kind of looked at properly. Uh, and that is Monk's Token Bar. So uh, this is my module list that I've got for our Curse of Strahd um, adventure. Uh, and what I was thinking was, because this is mostly theatre of the mind, or assisted theatre of the mind, however you want to put it, um, kind of scenario, we're not really using tokens on screen. Um, so let me just close this. So uh, Monk's Token Bar, this, that's the one it is. Um, yeah, we're not really using tokens on screen here. So when I was looking at this particular scene, which is the um, the Svalich Road, where there's potentially the encounter with the wolves and things, um, I had my wolves down here, hidden off screen, so they are there so that when I want to start combat, it will automatically um, start combat. I can call all those in, and of course they're available when I run that combat. Now, I'm not using much automation here at all. This is very much... Um, going to be driven you know almost tabletop rather than with all the automation that we've looked at in Stormwreck Isle. Why? Because I don't feel that it needs that much automation. This is much more story driven than it is combat driven. Unlike things like Stormwreck Isle which are high adventure this is this is more gothic horror. Um, so it's a bit slower paced from an action point of view. There's a lot more other things going on. But that did give me a slight problem. And that is, because they haven't got tokens on screen, they're not... Yeah, of course they can see it in the actor tab. Um, you know, they've got their members of their party there. Of course they can drop it down into their um, little bar. But it was kind of hiding some of the information that generally I kind of have on screen. So I've, uh, you can probably tell already, I've imported a couple of extra characters here. Um, so I've brought in Nundro, Haley, uh, and Tharivol, who's not one that I've used for demos before but I've brought Thario in here um, but what I thought would be nice is for the characters sorry the players to be able to see their own actors um, and that's what we're looking at so if you're not already aware of what Monk's Token Bar does if you look at the bottom of the screen down where my mouse is wiggling about you will see I've got a little pop-up here which has indeed it has Haley, Nundro and Tharivol um, characters down there with their little images uh, and effectively that replaces a need for a token so you may have realized that these tokens up on the right hand side now are all invisible so the players can't see those in the same way they can't see the wolves but they can see these and as a DM um, at a glance I can see all their armor classes because I'm not using loads of automation, means I actually need to look at those armor classes. <laughs> um, so they're right there. I've got their passive perceptions as well. That's that middle line there. And then I've got their hit points, which I don't need to have on, but I can. But it basically it gives me the whole party down there nice and easy to glance at those things if I need them. As a DM, it also gives me a few other controls. One of those controls is around movement. So at the moment, I've got this ticked here to say no movement. So when a player's logged in, even if their um, even if their token is on screen, they can't move it um, until I allow them to move it. So rather than pausing the game, I can have the game unpause but also lock their token so they're not running around. Um, now, because I've got the tokens off to one side and they're hidden, the players can't access it anyway. Obviously, I'm, we're not using vision and things. But I can do a number of things, give them free movement so that they can move however they like. I can lock them into combat movement as well. There it is down the bottom here. Lock them into combat um, movement. What that means is in when they're in combat, they can only move their token on their combat turn. So it's... <laughs> Not sure if you've encountered this while well, you're in the middle of combat and while you're dealing with one person, um, somebody else is moving their token around all over the place. It's like, no, no, stop that. It's a nonsense. Stop it. Uh, you can lock it down so they can't move until it's their turn, which is nice. OK, a couple of other things. So um, there is on here uh, also a request role and a contested role. So if I do click request role, so I've just cl left clicked on that, um, it is asking me. 
or rather it's popping up this now we have seen a bit of this before because this does tie into some of the other automation stuff that we've we've um we've looked at but we can set a dc say it's a dc 12 uh, if we want to we can show that we can say what kind of role it is um and we can put in some text if we want some flavor and we can choose who it is that we want to make those roles so they're all going to make this role here and I can select and say, actually, I all want, all want you to make a insight. Now, I can request or request with role. Now, if I click this, you heard some noises looking over in my chat. Uh, insight check. And because it's got, because I said with role, it's rolled automatically. And it's told me who has passed that insight check. I mean, you know, Haley with a 25, that's quite impressive, isn't it? <laughs> so um, they've passed. Now, what's really nice is across the bottom of this, we're in the right hand side in the chat here, across the bottom of this, we've got a number of buttons where we can select all actors. Now, if you just saw, when I clicked that, all three of these tokens just got selected. I can then do uh, select ones who made a critical save or I can select ones that um, ones that passed it. I can select ones that did not pass it, um, and I can select ones that critically failed. So that's really nice. Um, unfortunately, I've picked a role that they've all made. Let's let's do another one because we can. So we're going to left click down here because all three tokens are selected still over here. It's automatically said, "Oh, these ones you want." Uh, yeah, let's say yes. Let's pick a religion role. We're less likely to make that. And again, I can do that. Right, brilliant. Tharivol made this one. Um, Nundro didn't and Haley didn't, which is embarrassing for Haley. Um, but you see this plus minus, uh, this plus and cross here. I can actually manually say yes and override that and say actually you passed it or you didn't. So for something like a religion role, there might be a reason that you want the cleric. I don't know, maybe they're the same. They follow the same God as the um, as the the role is designed for or something i don't know you can override that and say they automatically pass it if you want to but i can again watch these tokens here they're all selected at the moment i can click um oh it's not quite doing it for me ah oh, right yeah so sorry by clicking the 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 tick next to it now it is automatically saying um which ones I want to select. So I can select all the ones that failed it, um, those two, all the ones that passed it, and switch between them as much as I want to. So of course, I can use that if I want to and go, oh right, everybody who failed it, maybe now they need to do a different contested role and it's automatically selected them. Um, <clears throat> or I could be asking them to do a different type of role, such as a, I don't know, a, a death saving throw. Yeah, so we, we can make the death throw saving throw instead. And that has requested them to make that role themselves. Let's clear that off. Okay, so that is the request role. Select as many people as we do or don't want to be able to do that. Any of those roles at all. Um, we, you know, think of Smith Tools role if we want to. Excellent, really, really handy for what we're doing. But we also have contested role. So that's this second one down here. I know it's quite small on that screen. Second one down here, the two people. And because I've got these two tokens selected, it's automatically choosing them. Uh, what is this contested role? Again, I can make sure it's public or whatever I want to do. Um, but I might be saying that actually um, it's going to be an athletics v athletics check. Uh, and that would be in the case of Haley using her... Um, her shove ability with her shield master feet and she's trying to knock nundro down it's a contested um, athletics check so again i can we know what request with roll will roll it automatically if i just do request this is the one it brings up here athletics v athletics and clicking on that it will ask them to make their rolls and they can do that and then you can see automatically it's decided that Nundro is the winner there. And again, I've got these buttons. Only select the people who made it. Only select the people who failed it. Um, or select everybody involved. And then I can resolve that. So that's a really nice way of quickly resolving those contested things or the dice rolls we need characters to make 
when we don't have all that automation in. Uh, and I think that's great. That's lovely. So those are default um, make the make a nice role, make the make a contested role, uh, select movement. But we can also right click on any of these as the DM. We can use this to send a private message. So in the chat now, it automatically sets up a private message for us. So that's only going to Haley, which is nice. Um, we can edit characters, edit tokens from here and edit the stats that are showing. So let me just click on that for Haley's. And you can see that this is showing three numbers for her. It's showing her attributes AC value, so her armor class. And I can change the color of that if I want to. Let's uh, make armor class blue, for example. Um, her skills for her passive perception. Okay, we can do that. And I've got her attributes for her hit points. Uh, we can, if we wanted to, make that green. And this little icon on the left side here, if I click on that, <laughs> there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them, you can select your own icon. So pretty much any attribute that you wanted to add to this, you can choose to do so. It comes with default of the armor class and the passive perception. Be again, because I'm not using tokens on the board, I got it to add hit points on there and just chose that little heart icon. Now, if I save this, you can see, look at the color changes down here at the bottom there. So we can see blue is their armor class, green is their hit points, etc. So you can customize that if you want to, which is nice. Uh, we can also add inspiration. Okay, so Haley now has inspiration. It says in the top right in the chat, just let's know. Uh, and if I double click on Haley, it will open her character sheet. And at the top right next to her where it says third level, we can see she's got her inspiration point. We can turn it on and off. So it will be able, it's a quick way of being able to do that as well. Uh, we can also get it to target that token if we find that's easier for whatever reason. And we can individually set the movement and say actually Haley has free movement um, even if everybody else has no movement. So we can do that individually per character if we want to. So it's a really nice way of just being able to see those things if I don't want to have my tokens all over the screen. Now let's look at a couple of the um, configuration settings for this. So we're on Monk's token bar here. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Uh, reset, reset the position of the bar. We can edit the stats. So we've just looked at this. So we did it directly from the bar on the live screen, but you can obviously all do it all in here as well. Um, personally, I'm going to just reset these colors because that's going to drive me nuts. Um, thank you very much. Um, but we can also, if you want to, allow the players to be able to see this. So by default, the players can't see this, um, this token bar at the bottom, but we can allow them. Allow them to see, um, or allow those movement buttons to be on the side there so that we can change that movement easily. Um, a whole bunch of other stuff. Show people who are offline. Actually, it says show the tokens of players that are offline, uh, that aren't online or are offline, <laughs> whichever way you want to put it. Um, show the actors, even if they've got no no token on the current scene. Um, filter duplicates, just so it doesn't accidentally go, hang on a minute, you've got more than the same, more than one token on here. I'll put you on the bar twice. Uh, minimum player permission. So you can have the token bar so that it will only show things that you have for example, observer rights to or your only owner. So if you have it as owner only, your players, for example, will only be able to see their character. But if you want this up so they can see the other characters as well, you can do something like set it to observer like I have. And that way the players will be able to see the other characters within the party um, and be able to see those stats. But they're only observer. They can open the character sheet, but they can't mess with it. So that's absolutely fine. We can do that. Um, a few other things. So at the moment, I've got my, my token bar here as horizontal. So Haley next to Nundro next to Thurival. But you can do it vertical. I did have a play with that. I was nearly sick. <laughs> Didn't like it at all. Uh, so I got rid of that. Uh, double click action defaults to open the character sheet, but you can have that immediately to request a saving throw. I'm not sure why I would ever use that when the, the roll thing is right here anyway. Um, and you can change the size of the tokens and stuff. Now, I've made my tokens much bigger. In fact, it seems to have shrunk them. Uh, made my tokens much, much bigger. 
um, but they were a little bit kind of grainy so I increased the resolution now, obviously the larger the resolution is you know the more detail it is potentially has a performance hit um, depends on your machine and and all those other things uh, show resource bars so yeah mine's got the resource bars the hit points at the bottom and the token pictures do you want to take it from that token or from that actor entirely up to you I've got mine for my actor because I'm not really using tokens um, at least not at this part of this type of campaign uh, show that inspiration so we saw we could add it but you can actually have a button here that will show it down there as well in fact that might be nice to leave on if you use inspiration a lot uh, this disable panning option is when you um, when you double click or when you come into when you you know you try to double click your character or just click on your character it will find your let me let me save this so if I click on Nundro can you see that it's panning just one left click it's panning to that character now that's a really really good function if, for your players if, they, if they've lost their token they could just click once boom, takes it straight to them now for this particular setup I don't really want them zooming off to the side to a hidden token um, or no token at all. So let me just go back to those configure settings. With this disable panning option, if I've got that switched on, it's, uh, I have to reload for this one. But with that switched on, I can right click on here and there is a disable panning. And if I click disable panning, what you'll notice is when I click on Nundro, it zooms to him or Tharivol back to Nundro, but it won't pan to Haley. Okay, so that's quite nice the fact that I can turn that off to say, well, actually, if you single click on your thing, it's not going to whiz off and find your character. Um, now, the chances are for most people, they are going to want that so that there is panning. It's a nice way for you to be able to, where, where was I? <laughs> I was watching what was going over there. Where's my character? boom, that's going to pan you straight to it, which is probably what you want. In this type of situation, I don't want that. My only slight annoyance with this is I have this little token. If you look at Haley down there on the, the, um, on the bar, she's got this little indicator here showing that we don't want it to pan. Um, I wish it didn't show that because I don't like having that on there because it's just like, why have I got that there? It's like it doesn't affect play at all, um, <clears throat> but it's got on there. Now, if I turn off this show disable panning, it's got to reload again. Um, it will still pan to these two. And it won't pan to Haley. So what you can do is turn it on, disable panning, and then turn the option off so it hides that option. The option's still there in the background. The flag of pan or don't pan is still there. Um, <clears throat> but I found that actually I'm, I'm finding I have to, I'm resetting that every scene and it was a right faff. Um, so if I just look at another scene, for example, when I was playing with it, notice although they're invisible, I've got all, <laughs> I've got all my tokens in the middle here so that when they pan, at least they're panning to the, <laughs> to the actual scene rather than whizzing off over here somewhere um, so I haven't got that working how I want to and I know what your next question is it's like well why have I got these on here at all do I need these on here if I've got them down the bottom and that was the whole point let's get rid of them now I've got rid of them look what's happened at the bottom because I haven't got the active tokens on here uh, it's not even showing Nundro at all. Um, and part of that is because although I have a Haley and I have a Tharivol and a Nundro is not assigned to Nundro. Can you have a Nundro? There we go. There is. That's better. <laughs> Just solved one of my little problems. <laughs> oh dear. It's not until you try and show somebody else and then you suddenly go, oh, hang on a minute. I've been an idiot. So because I haven't got any tokens on here, these still, these still work. Um, and they still show the right stats and things but that was one of the settings that I had about let's go back to it flicking in and out just to keep you guys on your toes um, about showing the actors even if they have no token on scene yes um, 
but it, you need to uh, allow player to use what was the other one something about ah uh, show tokens of players that aren't online so you can see these are kind of uh, not grayed out but they're purple aren't they um, because we haven't got those people online but I've got them to stay there now in my other window I am just going to log in as one of those NPCs who shall I pick let's pick Nundro let's log in as Nundro okay so Nundro is now in the game um, but it hasn't updated this so you can see all the way to bottom left here if you can see Nundro Nundro and he's got a dot in there to show that he is logged in this is still not hasn't quite updated let's switch to one of the other scenes uh, and then let's switch back again because sometimes these things no it's not quite showing it that's fine all right let's have a look couple of, a look at a couple of these other configurations before i then show you the player version um so token sizes we already looked at um movement settings change there's some interesting things we can do here notify the players when we do the movement change so if i change this you can see we've got that orange pop up there that says it's been changed it's whether that shows that to players or not uh, change movement to combat so if you once you hit the either once you've got an encounter here and you go start combat or you do it through the combat carousel as soon as combat starts do you want it to automatically flick all of the players into that only move on their turn in combat? Again, for this scenario, I don't need it, but I think that's a really nice one. I really like the fact that it will no, you're not moving your you're not moving your tokens as soon as combat starts until it's your turn. Um, allow active combatant NPC to move. Took me a while to understand what that was on about, but if you've got summoned creatures they're effectively npcs so you summon a, um, an air elemental it's effectively an npc can the player move that npc on their turn the answer should be yes or the dm might choose to have control of it it depends doesn't it some are under the control of the caster some of them are just summoned and do their own thing it depends allow movement after your turn so the idea is is once you finished your turn in combat you can still move your token a bit so that's about flow of combat so sometimes it's like yeah you've moved some used some of your movement or none of your movement you end your turn the dm's moving on to the next person's go uh, the next initiative round um but that player still gets to finish off their movement if they want to um and just kind of readjust themselves and stuff so if you find your player your play is a bit slow it might help with that personally i don't think i need it uh, what happens after combat as soon as you end combat does it go back to free movement again does it go back to or stay on that combat turn or does it go to no movement now because this is theater of the mind very much and i'm not really using tokens i've got mine as no movement and show movement button on the combat tracker i've just got that option on okay a couple of other things after combat if a player gains a level will it send a whisper uh, do I want to show the XP dialogue? No, I'm doing Curse of Strahd through, not through XP gain, but through milestones. Um, high combatants after an encounter. Well, chances are that's what I would want to do, um, but I'm going to leave that off. Um, NPC sharing, in other words, divide NPC, uh, your XP between NPCs, etc. Uh, and then options around gold. And there's stuff to do with loot tables here and some of the request role settings now i'm not really looked at the loot table stuff at this point um, again i don't need to for the way that i'm running curse of strad but request role settings allow the players to request roles themselves i'm not sure that i would they can ask me as the dm and then i will set up the request role don't really want them automatically doing it there will be somebody who just does it all the time just because just because every time they walk into a tavern they go oh, i'm gonna do a charisma roll you know <laughs> stop doing it you know <laughs> um but there's a few other things here bypassing the dialogue adding whether there could be advantage or disadvantage so we've got those on for roles and stuff like that uh, so yeah a number of different things we can do there but ultimately for me this is all about having the ability to see these individuals for the, for me as the DM, being able to see them down here, 
Uh, I can double click on them as the DM, open up their character sheets and stuff to look at details if I need to. Uh, yes, of course I can go to my actor tab. Um, of course I could put them in my macro thing down here, but this just uh, at a glance is much easier for me. Um, chances are my right hand bar here is going to be on the chat a lot of the time. I don't really want to have to be jumping between one or the other. Um, if I'm looking up something on Tharavol and it's like, right, what was that thing you've got? What does fast hands do? I can still see what's going on with the chat while I'm having a quick look at that. And, you know, oh, oh yes, what's trance, etc. OK, so for me, that makes it a bit easier. Right. OK, let's um, bring over the player character um, view here. So as you can see, I'm logged in as the player um, as Nundro. And I've got my little bar down the bottom. Now I can hide that or pop it out if I want to. And I've got some movement buttons. They can't do anything with those movement buttons, but they can see that they're locked onto non-movement. And they can see all of those players themselves, which is fine. But see what I mean about these are really quite small. So what settings does the player have? So we're going to configure settings, go to Monk's token bar. It got a lot less, which is normal, of course. They can turn it off completely. They don't have to have it. They don't need to use it. Um, but again, are they going to want to keep going to that Actors tab to go to their character? Oh, there I am. Um, they're probably going to want to leave that on chat most of the time. So I would say they probably leave it on. They can put it vertical if they want to. <laughs> I didn't like it. Um, but they can also adjust the size of these tokens themselves. So um, let's put that at about 100 as well, 100, 100, if I save changes. Need to reload because it's going to increase the look that much better, see? Now, depending on the size of your screens and everything else, um, you might find that 100 is too big, of course, but I think I think it's actually a shame I can't make them a bit bigger than that. Um, as a player, I might want them a bit bigger. Um, but yeah, I've got all of that there. Um, I can show inspiration if I want to from this side. Uh, I can change the, the request roll noise if I want to, because we know how fun that is, um, and whether they want to bypass that dialogue. So they haven't got a lot of options, but they have got a couple of options if they want it. And of course, again, they can just hide the whole thing if they want to do that as well. So from a player's point of view, they can see the party. Then nothing, none of the scene is getting clogged up with tokens or anything like that. Um, they can see what they need to see. They can access what they need to access. They don't ever have to click off of chat. Uh, if it goes into combat, um, that's all going to be dealt with kind of through the chat and requesting dice rolls. So actually, I will be asking them much more readily to be opening their character sheets and using their things directly out of here. It's like, yes, I am going to make that dagger attack. Um, yeah, I'm going to do it this way. Oh, yes, brilliant. Okay, that hits. Do your damage. Right, I'm going to run my damage. Yeah, right, one point of damage. Nice one, Nundra, you muppet. <laughs> Doesn't know which way to hold a dagger. Um, but yeah, I'm, that's how I'm going to do my combat. It's much more traditional, much less automation. Um, but I've got everything I need. You see, back here, you know, that's okay. I don't mind going, oh, yep, yeah, okay. So you're now on 10 health. Yep, yeah. brilliant. It's not that difficult to do. Um, and again, because it's not going to be huge battles with lots and lots of people, uh, I don't need to do lots of automation. Anyway, have I prattled on enough? Yes. Are you used to me prattling on? Yes, you are. <laughs> Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate you watching. Uh, obviously, leave a thumbs up, leave some kind of comment. Don't mind what it is, emoji or anything like that, or everything helps. And of course, if you're not a subscriber, please do. It's very much appreciated. It really, really does help this channel kind of um, take off. Uh, we're heading towards 500 subs. That's our big landmark we want to hit first. Um, that changes quite a lot of things uh, and encourages me to continue doing this, develop further and keep providing you interesting, hopefully useful uh, videos to keep you going. Cheers, everyone. You take care.